Sensors and Image Formation. We're going to look at different types of common imaging sensors, how images are formed using those sensors in terms of mathematical models, and start looking at different coordinate systems. Um, digital images are really nothing more than arrays of numbers, uh, very large arrays. Those numbers can represent intensity, such as shown here. This uh, small region of interest here around this man's eye is actually um, shown as this large array of numbers right here. So the higher the number, of course, the uh, brighter that image pixel is. Numbers can also represent range in terms of range sensors or with uh, sensors such as x-ray machines, it would be the um, x-ray absorption coefficient, etc. So let's look at a uh, typical camera imaging sensor. That consists of the following elements. An aperture, which is an opening or pupil to limit the amount of light entering the system and also the angle of the incoming light rays. The optical system, usually a lens to focus the light onto a single point and some sort of imaging photosensitive surface such as a film or in the case of CCD cameras a set of electronic sensors. So one thought would be to design our artificial imaging system using a well-known system which is the human eye and the human vision system. This is a diagram of the uh, human eye the main parts of this are the cornea, which is incoming rays are uh, partially focused using the cornea, refracted, uh, further focused using a lens which is uh, deformable, and then they pass, those rays pass through the um, vitreous humor here and are focused on the retina. The retina actually is a uh, film of cells which extends quite a large visual angle. The highest resolution concentration of cells though is in the fovea which is actually fairly small and that would contain about uh, 300,000 uh, cells or cones, the, the high resolution elements. Um, the electrical signals from the retina are partially processed and sent through the optic nerve to the visual cortex. So you would think we would be able to just replicate this. Unfortunately, um, much of the vision processing that the human brain does is pre-attentive, means that we're not really conscious of how it works. So it's difficult to measure and study its detailed function. So psychologists have done some experiments with um, for example, perception in people, also on animals by sticking electrodes into the uh, brain. Um, a great deal of processing is done right on the retina. So there are about um, 100 million, million elements here. Those are processed, those signals are processed to get down to about 1 million optical nerve uh, channels in the optic nerve and quite a bit of further processing is done in the visual cortex in the back of your brain. And uh, some progress has been made on identifying maps um, for motion fields to detect motion, directions, shape, color, and binocular disparity. So even though we can't use the brain to just simply, the, the human vision system to simply replicate an artificial vision system, um, it is an existent proof that it can be done and well. Let's look at a digital camera, uh, namely a CCD camera, which is the most common type. The CCD camera consists of a two-dimensional array of sensor elements. The um, CCD stands for charge coupled device. The sensor elements accumulate charge during the exposure and then um, once the exposure time has finished, those are transferred out and uh, digitized, sent to a computer or a uh, monitor. Uh, of course, you have a, um, the rest of the vision system here, the optical element, the, uh, the lens the, to focus the 
image onto the plane. A, uh, another type of common digital camera is CMOS and the design is, is very similar except here the, um, the photo detectors, the light affects the conductivity of each photo detector and instead of um, shifting out the, um, the value sequentially they're read out using a multiplexing scheme. The main factors in terms of um, a vision system is how many sensor elements, the number of sensor elements that you have, the size of the sensor elements, the size of the physical chip, and the resolution of the analog to digital converter, usually expressed in terms of number of bits. Um, we won't look too much at the actual lens uh, properties, but a thin lens um, can be modeled this way. Um, an ideal thin lens consists of a uh, parabolic surface like this where points are raised from a point here if it passes through the center of the lens is undeflected. If the ray from the point um, passes uh, parallel to the optical axis that is deflected, all of those rays are deflected uh, through a point called the focal point. So using those two properties, you can uh, come up with the equation for a thin lens, which tells you um, the distance of a scene point and the distance to where that point, the rays from that point are focused. So if we call the distance to the scene point P, the, uh, the distance is called Z, capital Z, and the distance to the image point would be called uh, little z prime. Then the equation of the thin lens is 1 over capital Z plus 1 over small z is equal to 1 over f. So for example, if um, the scene point is at infinity, that means capital Z goes to infinity, and you simply have 1 over z prime equals 1 over f, or little z equals f. So basically, um, the distance of uh, points that are imaged in the scenes are all focused at different places uh, from the lens. We won't be using uh, the thin lens equation very much. We're mostly going to be using the pinhole camera model. So a pinhole camera was actually the first simple model of a camera developed in the Renaissance. It simply consists of a box with a pinhole through it. The the pinhole is small enough so that rays pass through it. Um, th there's very little uh, spread in the rays that pass through it, so mostly the rays are focused on a single point. Of course, it's inverted like that. So the advantage of this is that there are very simple equations to describe the projection of a scene point onto the image. And this is what we call perspective projection. We're going to use this pinhole camera model exclusively, except a little later in the course where we're going to model actual lens distortion in real cameras. So let's take a look at the perspective projection equations. So here is um, my imaging system, and here is a scene point called capital P. So the first thing you notice is that we're actually going to put if this is our pinhole, we actually pretend that the image plane is in front of the pinhole to, in, to avoid this inverted image problem. But really, the equations are exactly the same. So this is going to be our pinhole. And we're going to define that to be the origin of the camera's coordinate system. So this is actually a 3D coordinate system. We're going to take x with a z uh, pointing outward. The distance from the pinhole to the image plane is our focal length uh, called f. The position of the 3D scene point is, um, is x, y, z, and that's expressed with respect to the coordinate system of the camera. So we can look at this system um, as a similar triangles. So we have one triangle consisting of the pinhole through the image plane and point little p, that's a projected point. 
The other triangle is um, the, the triangle consisting of the pinhole, the image the scene point, uh, and those are similar. So the uh, the x uh, image position, little x, is going to be this distance f times um, the x divided by the z. So those uh, express those ratios. And the same thing would be true for the y, which would be coming um, like out of the plane here. Okay, we can also calculate the field of view of this little system by looking at what, what would be the largest span of rays that could be imaged. So if I take the maximum width of this image plane, w, uh, half of that is w over 2. So the angle um, of this little triangle is theta over 2. And I can write the tangent of that. Tangent of theta over 2 is just w over 2 over f. So that would give me the angle theta. OK, so just to reiterate, um, there is a difference between camera coordinates, which are these 3D coordinates centered at the coordinate system of the camera, this point right here, and the image plane coordinates, which are the two-dimensional coordinates of the image plane here. So the camera system. Um, we usually take to have the z-axis point outward, the x-axis points to the right, that would be into the board here, and the y-axis points down. And those would be in units of, let's say, meters. The image plane coordinates, um, these units would be units on the image plane, typically millimeters or something like that. Um, the origin of that system is where the optical axis pierces the image plane. And this, this image plane is really where the CCD or CMOS uh, plane would be.